things, my fellow subjects, this is I, the Dalek Emperor, and welcome back to another Dalek Reacts. Today we are going to be reacting to... No, no, not another Dalek Reacts, what am I, what am I talking about? Welcome to another Dalek Cast, I mean... And today we have a lot of questions. We have two questions from Jamie Alberting saying, Can you please on Tuesday react? Uh, can you react to. Season two are of a uh, two more season two Transformers Ascension for episode three and four. Okay, it's a two parter. Yes, uh, I, I will. I will do that. In fact, I will do it. In fact, I shall do it. Um, when I have time, I'll do it tomorrow. Anyway, um, have you seen the new Batman movie? Yes, I have, and I have to say, it is pretty amazing, in my opinion. Yes. I'm the same as score by Michael Giacchino, whatever his name is. Yeah, but the music in that was just like brooding and dark. But um, one thing I have to say though, uh, Bruce Wayne was not in this movie, let's just say that. He was most definitely not in this movie because he hasn't really developed that Bruce Wayne persona and the reason why is because I think maybe it's because he lost his parents, he, he, he's still grieving about him losing his parents and he's still been in the whole Batman persona, yeah. Um, one thing I've noticed, the Penguin, um, he, play, he was played by Colin Farrell, I had no idea he played, he was played by Colin Farrell in that movie. It's like, it's so hard to actually see him with all the prosthetic and makeup. I was like, really? That was him? My goodness. Anyway, um, yeah, we have some reactions to get through. Uh, sadly, no video ideas today. Uh, um, for some reason, I don't know why. Anyway, let's, um, let's, let's begin then. Let's uh, have, have a look at these reactions. And also, if you guys could suggest me more games and uh, uh, video, uh, more uh, future video ideas for me to do, please uh, comment them in the hashtag DalekCast video games and hashtag DalekCast video ideas. Anyway, thought I should mention that. Anyway, let's. Let's um, move on then. Okay, so this video here was made by the Oxcast, which, if you must know, is basically a Minecraft team where they do like Minecraft shenanigan things. Apparently, they've made a song in 2014, which all credit will go to the Yacht, to the Yacht's cast, of course. Anyway, so yeah, all credit will go to them, and it's called Diggy Diggy Hole, apparently. Oh, why is the sound down? I have no idea. Let's turn it up. There we go. I don't know if I am allowed to play this. 
this, uh, but because of copyright reasons, but um, but uh, if uh, if uh, the problems, um, I just won't play the music. I'll just play the video. Brothers of the mind rejoice sing, sing, sing with me Raise your pink and raise your voice Sing, sing, sing with me Down and down into the deep Moon of what we'll find beneath Diamonds, rubies, gold and gold Hidden in the mountain storm Born underground Some from a teeth of snow Raised in the dark The safety of a mountain home Skin laid of iron Still in a boat Dig a dig makes us free Come on brother, sing with me I am a dwarf, I'm a digging a hole Diggy diggy hole, diggy diggy hole I am a dwarf, I'm a digging a hole Diggy diggy hole, digging a hole I think the Oxcast were the first Minecraft YouTubers, so they're like the OGs of Minecraft, kind of like Stampy and Dantidia. Fool's joke. 
Birgit, it's not. Burgers, you're not here. Mm. Oh yeah, this is when I watch the something movie, April the first. That's right, yes, I watched this, the Sonic movie. Good lord. Finally, somewhere other than water or space. Good lord. Is that before the Battle of Yemen? I'm just kidding. Oh, wait, no, it's probably sunny for someone else, I don't Galactic Wars Animation Series. No, I don't wanna, no, I don't wanna play that anyway. Let's see what these two videos at the top are about anyway. That was a good video, thank you, Big MCTH. I'll put all the video links in the description below as usual. Let's begin. And moving on then. Okay, so we have two videos in... Oh, one second. We have two videos. Um, if you must say, yes, I tried recording this bit, but apparently, for some reason, my audio didn't decide to record. Wait, uh, is it? Oh, it is. It is recording. That's good. So I guess we'll have to react to them again. <laughs> okay, so this video, these two videos were made by Yarn Hub, and apparently they set the set during the first and the second world war, so we're going to watch Attack of the Dead Men first. It's a foggy night on August the 6th, 1915, and in the trenches near Osovitz Fortress, the Russian Empire is facing off against the German. R Russian Empire? Oh dear. Um, why, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit indifferent to the whole Russian stuff because of whole Russian invasion of the Ukraine. It's in what is now modern-day Poland. Lieutenant Kudlinski's boots sink in the mud as he patrols the trenches of his company. He's the 13th company commander assigned to the Osowitz Fortress, yeah, a stronghold protecting a choke this. point in the border. But, uh, okay, I'm guessing... Tired men line the trench. But then again, the Germans in this were also in the First World War and Second World War considered to be the evil in this world, the Axis, but... Um, but, okay, uh, it's just... Uh, I wasn't... I'm not really a fan of Russia after what they did. Many ill with trench foot and lice. Artillery fire rains down on the fortress behind them. The thunder of explosions keeping the exhausted soldiers awake. In the distance, their enemies prepare for the battle. 
They are about to unleash a hideous and terrible weapon. What is a new it? way to cut down the defenders en masse. On the signal, uh, German soldiers release a huge cloud of chlorine gas. There's a chlorine. Oh. I know of this but of this chlorine gas. We used it against the Thals during the Neutronic War, but yeah, and it did, if you must know it well, it wasn't designed to draw the enemy out, it was designed to kill them. Tailwind, and the gas starts to roll towards the unsuspecting defenders, drifting, clawing at the air. It's a wall of death that silently sucks the life of any unfortunate man or beast that's enveloped yes, by its green clinging embrace. I've seen what it does to the enemy. Well, all enemies of the Daleks. A silent... Well, just Thals, a certain enemy of the Daleks. It's the grave. It forms pools of smog as it pours over and into ditches and craters. Really? In the Russian-held trenches, a sentry shouts, GAS! The men stand up and look over the parapet. On the other side, they see the nightmares of every soldier. A massive wall of dark green fog looming ever closer. The soldiers pass. They have no gas masks. The men Why desperately rush to fabricate makeshift masks. masks. They take bandages and rags, urinate them, and put them over their nose and mouths. Some can't and use water instead. And others are left desperately trying to get the materials they need as the cloud of death approaches ever closer. It's not going to save them. Kotlinski's chest feels tight and the air around him starts to burn. He holds his mask tight to his face and closes his eyes. The gas rolls over the trench and the pain skyrockets. Men cry and scream around him, their lungs and skin burning away. He can do nothing but hold his mask tight and hope as the screams of his comrades fall quiet, one by one. He collapses, his strength slowly and painfully withering away. Oh dear. A German soldier advances through the fog, surrounded by his countrymen. Once the kill zone, now they approach eerily unopposed. A complete and utter silence has fallen upon the battlefield, only broken by the sounds of their own boots stepping on the mud. His chest still hurts, gas still lingers in the air. Trench lines and fortifications face down his unit through the fog, like hunting spectres, but nothing ever fires at them. His fellow soldiers cut a path through the rat's nest of barbed wire, and the unit keeps moving. They reach the first trench and uh, see the devastation. On April 1st, apparently. Bodies of men covering their mouths, huddling in corners, some fallen outside the trenches as they tried to flee. It's complete devastation. His unit finds a Russian soldier sunken in the trench, barely clinging on to life. The German looks away as he can't bear to watch as a fellow soldier puts the Russian out of his misery, his blade probably bringing more mercy than doom upon the poor soul. Yes, I see. Now, tentatively and on edge, the unit resumed the advance. They cross over the second line of trenches, still no resistance, but more death. Then, as they approach the reserve trench, they see some movement through the fog. The Germans stop. Ghosts stalk them. More figures in the fog, and the sounds of steps in the mud reach their ears. Suddenly, a figure appears from the fog walking towards them. Emerging from the mist is a Russian. At least that's what they think it is. It's difficult to tell. The German soldier's blood runs cold. That isn't alive. That man is dead. Then more figures appear from the fog. And more. And more. It's a horde of twisted, broken bodies. The dead are walking. What the heck? Zombies. The terrified German drops his rifle and runs for his life. Kaczynski leads the charge with all the strength he has left, 
he falls upon the first German he sees. His comrades quickly join and together they take the fight to the enemy with their bayonets. The two lines clash in a chaotic and brutal melee and I'm bullets fly the through it all. There's no order, no plan, only the most pure, deep hatred fueling the soldiers. The shot Germans fall into disarray. Many flee the scene. The remaining fight for their lives. Both sides lose men as the battle goes on. But the terrifying visage and unwavering resolve of the dead men proves overwhelming. The Germans fall back under heavy resistance. Men from other companies join into the brawl, and artillery rains down on the rear of the German position. Katlinski charges the first captured trench, bayonet in hand, but he's struck by a bullet on his side. He collapses on the muddy terrain as the rest of his men pass by him, charging on ahead. The Germans within are quickly dispatched, and a soldier drags Katlinski to safety. He's heavily wounded and unable to fight. Bleeding profusely, he sees Lieutenant Straminski, a brave Polish sapper from one of the companies. Katlinski calls for him and cedes his command to the soldier. Straminski solemnly takes the position, salutes his commander, and leaves to continue the attack. Straminski rejoins his comrades as the charge turns from a fight to the last man to a successful counterattack. I say. The Germans are fleeing and the Russian soldiers rapidly retake the defensive lines. In the trenches, they find hundreds of their fallen comrades. This invigorates the dead men, their fury and hatred demanding revenge. Stravinsky leads the charge to the last trench under control of the Germans. They breach it and mercilessly dispatch the enemy. With the retaking of the last trench line, the counterattack comes to an end. Every enemy, either dead or having fled back into the fog from which they came. Straminsky said, I cannot describe the bitterness and fury with which our soldiers marched against the German poison. Ah, I see. Wyczerpani, zatruci, biegli tylko w celu zmiażdżenia Niemców. Nikt nie zostawał w tyle, nikogo nie trzeba było poganiać. Nie było pojedynczych bohaterów, kompanie działały jak jedna osoba. Ożywione tylko jednym celem, jedną myślą. Umrzeć, ale zemścić się na nikczemnych trucicielach. The attack of the dead men, while a valiant revenge against a terrible weapon, would ultimately be in vain. The Russians were forced to abandon the fortress under threat of encirclement just two Yes, sadly, that's kind of not what happened to the Thals, because they were all instantly destroyed afterwards. Weeks later, Lieutenant Vladimir Katlinsky died from his injuries the evening of the attack. Under his command, he had rallied the remains of his and another unit and led them to charge at the right moment in time. He was posthumously awarded the Order of St. George, 4th grade, for his valiant actions on that fateful day. He was just 21 years old. 21. Lieutenant Vladislav okay. Straninsky was awarded the Sword of St. George for his bravery during the attack. He continued to serve and would suffer many injuries throughout the war. But he survived and went on to become an influential artist in Poland, his homeland. He died peacefully on December the 28th, 1952. 1952. Sorry, I got distracted, but yeah, that video was very, very good. Didn't know he died at a old age. Um, didn't know he died in 1952. Now, good man. Anyway, let's, let us watch the next video then. It's the 2nd of July, 1941. In a field kitchen in a forest near Dunaberg, Latvia, Ivan Pavlovich Serda calmly peels potatoes for the evening soup. Graduate from Culinary College, Serda is assigned to the 91st Tank Regiment, 46th Tank Division of the 21st Mechanized Corps as a cook. It's a grim scene at the camp. They've been fighting for four days straight and losses are mounting. 
All around him are men in limbo, tank crews with no tank, drivers without cars, and soldiers recovering from wounds. They clean their weapons, do laundry, smoke and chat with each other. The only people that seemed to have a set purpose were the mechanics running around fixing the many damaged tanks littered outside. Then suddenly, a liaison to the battalion commander arrives at the camp, shouting and ordering everyone to get your weapons and move out. A new push by the Germans threatens to encircle Allied forces, and every able-bodied man is desperately needed to plug holes in the front line. This ragged group of reserves included. All except him. As a cook, Serida is ordered to stay in place preparing meals as everyone else fights. If the front falls, he is to defend the camp to the death. As such, he can do nothing but watch as the men around him drop everything and rush into battle. The camp is left alone and deathly quiet, a far cry from the scene just moments prior. The eerie silence is only broken by the crackles of the fire, oh, the boiling water, oh, and the distant the echoes Russian of battle. Soldier, okay. In the middle of the dead camp still sits Serena, preparing okay. meals for the men. For As I said, I feel a bit odd about watching Russians. Um, watching basically Russians attack Germans in this war because of all Russian Ukraine invasion, but anyway. Fortunate enough to come back. A while later, a distant sound gets his attention. That distinctive rumble of engines and speaks really tank good. suspension. How long did it take More damaged tanks? These? He leaves his work behind to go and take a look. Outside, in a cloud of dust, he spots some vehicles in the distance approaching his position. He considers lifting his hand to greet them, but something is wrong. The shape of the tanks is off. His blood runs cold as he realizes those aren't his comrades. They are German panzers. Oh dear. He stares at the scene for a few eternal gut-wrenching moments. Oh yeah. The, those tanks look very similar to Mark III travel machines. Which could be one of the reasons why Davros and Terry Nation have based their design uh, based the design off a Mark III travel machine off of these Russian tank things. These Almost wishing German, for his eyes to be deceived. German tank things, I mean. But they aren't. Serena runs behind the kitchen tent, the suit long forgotten. Peeking out from his hiding place, he can see the tank slowly approaching. But also, he spots his rifle resting abandoned against a sack of potatoes. He curses silently to himself and desperately searches around the back of the tent for a weapon, any weapon. He quickly finds an axe they used to break firewood and takes it. It probably can't do much against the tank, but it will have to do. With the rumble of the tanks becoming ever louder, he takes another peek and watches as the German armor rolls by the camp. Two Panzer Kampfwagen 38Ts drive by, giving his kitchen little attention, but the third steers directly towards him. He hides and needs to think fast if he's to come out of this alive. Hearing the tank come to a stop and looking back out, he sees the German tank parked right in front of his kitchen. The turret hatch swings open and the tank commander's head pops out. The German appears to laugh and say things to his crew before nonchalantly jumping out of the machine and walking towards the seemingly abandoned kitchen. He watches the commander waiting for an opportunity, gathering his courage, ripping his axe. Then he strikes, charging out of his position, brandishing the axe high above his head and screaming like a madman. The German sees a sweaty, ragged figure with an apron and an axe charging towards him, and he runs for well, his life, fleeing right back to the safety of the tank. That's something I, I did not expect. Do you remember when a Dalek fought a tank? Yeah, he just shot a missile at it and it blew up. Serida chases him down through the kitchen and picks up his rifle along the way. The commander climbs up and quickly disappears inside the vehicle closing and locking the hatch behind him. Moments later, the tank's machine gun starts firing erratically, obviously unable to see Serena. 
Diving out of Machine Gun's arc of fire, he sits in a blind spot as he assesses the situation. Then he spots a tarp lying on the floor. Thinking quickly, he grabs the tarp and throws it on the tank's turret. The tankers continue firing the machine gun despite being unable to see. Ripping through the entire kitchen, Serida takes another piece of cloth and throws it onto the co-driver's vision port. Then he runs around behind the tank, takes off his apron and covers the driver's viewing port as well. The tank is now completely blind, yet they keep indiscriminately firing the machine gun. Fueled by adrenaline, Serida jumps on the German walkies and smacks the barrel of the machine gun with the axe repeatedly. The machine gun operator is confounded as the stock moves inside the tank in response to the pummeling from the axe. The German keeps firing though. Whatever this Soviet monster is on the tank, it will be stopped by German lead. Or so it thinks. As the barrel heats up through the continuous fire, set Soviet monster, yes. That's the best way to describe the um, Russians who are invading Ukraine right now. Serida is unrelenting. But yeah, shot, he's doing a good shot job to destroy the German Eventually, monsters. Eventually, the heat of the barrel and the devastating blows from Ivan cause the barrel to bend. Jesus. The machine gun is now useless, and Serida goes to work on the tank hull. Each swing of the axe reverberates inside the vehicle like a bell. He starts shouting fake orders to imaginary comrades, telling them, Get the grenades! Surround the tank! And giving answers in a different voice. The Germans inside are terrorized for their lives. They roll into a Soviet ambush, surrounded by dozens of men, clamoring for revenge against the German invaders. In their minds, there was nothing more to do. Obviously vastly outnumbered, they choose to surrender. The hatch opens underneath the tarpaulin. Serida waits, weapon at the ready. The commander in the turret opens the hatch. It's dark as the tarpaulin still covers the exit. He carefully climbs up, shouting out, We surrender! Slowly and deliberately, the commander removes the tarpaulin. When he finally escapes the clinging tarp, he looks and takes in the scene. Where are the Soviet soldiers? Baffled by what he sees, a lone Soviet soldier standing on top of his tank, aiming a moistened again at his chest. Wow. Serida orders the rest of the Germans off the tank one by one well and forces them at gunpoint to tie up their fellow soldiers. When the rest of the regiment return from the battle ready for soup, they're surprised not to see their cook by the campfire, but instead He's holding an entire tank crew prisoner and a working but somewhat battered tank alongside. His actions were recognized by the commander of the 21st Mechanized Corps, Major General Dmitry Yelyushenko, who stated, with his brave actions he set an outstanding example of heroism. Serida was assigned to scout duties after the events and would join his comrades in the front lines less than a week later. The axe he used during the engagement was kept as a memento of the 21st Mechanized Corps. Ivan Pavlovich Serida proved to be an excellent soldier. He continued to defend his country for the rest of the war, being promoted several times and receiving many awards and commendations throughout. He would serve in the Siege of Leningrad and in the Battle of Moscow as platoon commander and would later be promoted to senior lieutenant. I say. As the man who single-handedly defeated a German tank with an axe, Ivan Serida was awarded the Hero of the Soviet Union on the 31st of August 1941. Serida would survive the war, but it would take a heavy toll on his body. He succumbed to his many injuries on November the 18th, 1950, in his home village of Alexandrovka, Ukraine, aged 31. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to the channel and please watch more videos of ours. Yes, I will. I'll probably do it after this video anyway. Um, let's get back to me then, so we can end the video. So, my fellow subjects, I hope you enjoyed this video today. If you did, please like and subscribe to become part of a Dalek Empire. And I will see you all in the next video then. Goodbye. Thanks all for the enjoyable video today. Don't forget to click below to subscribe to the Dalek Empire. Or you will be exterminated.
long 